Hi everybody, welcome back. I'm Kristen and today I'm going to show you my top picks for transseasonal casual jackets. So if that interests you, keep watching. My top picks would have to be number one would be the honey tone jacket from Marilla Walker patterns. I made one recently and I just love the uh, the whole style of it. I'll go and pop it on. So this is the honey tone by Marilla Walker. I actually did uh, view B. View A is for a really heavy, uh, like a woolen lined coat. I wanted just the casual versions, which is uh, version B. Uh, it does say to have it unlined, but you can put the lining in. I decided to pop a little thin lining because I just love that pop of bright color against the denim i used almost like a japanese um pattern like almost like an origami pattern i think it looks great with the the denim i think uh, marilla's patterns come in at a size one to ten so they vary up to i think it's 117 centimeter bust which is around about a size 18 uh, to 20 ready to wear uh, i made a size seven I'm normally a size 14 to 16 and this is really roomy so I could quite easily have gone into the size 6. So it's just hard to know. You, you don't want a jacket to be too restrictive with your movement so I think it's it's good just to make that little smidge extra sizing up if you're not really sure with a pattern. I love the stitching details that she's added on there. It does say it's more of an intermediate to advanced maker but I, I think it's not too bad. I think an intermediate uh, sewers could quite easily tackle this. The thing I love most about this is the detail on the, especially on the pockets. It's got these beautifully designed pockets that you pop your hand in on the side and I've just rolled the sleeves up. I just think it gives it a nice casual light effect plenty of room to move around in it's got the kimono shaped sleeve the nice la pointed lapels which is uh, an over exaggerated lapel but I think it looks great with it and I've just used a really nice um, sort of almost etched button I'll give you a little look at my buttons but yeah I just think it's it's come up really lovely and I've worn this quite a bit nice over a t-shirt um, but yeah, quite easily um, look lovely over a, a jumper or a lightweight knit as well. So that's the Marilla Walker Honey Tone. Her patterns are so reasonably priced. Most of them come in a package version. So you might get a whole collection in one pattern, which is great value for money. So yeah, pop onto her website, Marilla Walker, um, and you'll get some inspiration there. My next favorite transseasonal jacket would be the Tamarack by Green Line Studios. Um, they've got a brilliant range of inspiration on their blog. At the moment, what's trending with the Tamaraks is the quilted effect. And although it's normally quilted anyway with the stitching, people are using the quilting effect with their pieces of fabric like they would normally make a quilt. They're using that piecing together the fabric in the actual uh, jacket itself. So if you've got a lot of scraps of fabric that coordinate together, that's a great way to use them up. Um, if you look on the uh, hashtag Tamarack Society, there's a whole society of people making Tamaracks on Instagram and you'll get so much creative inspiration um, if you look on there. The Tamarack is a, a fantastic jacket. As you can see, I've made this one here. Uh, I'll pop up, pop up some pictures of... Um, my jacket I made last year and I've just I've worn it a lot because, only because the fact is that it's warm without being overly hot and overly bulky. Uh, this one I've done with a Japanese poplin lining and you can get really creative with your lining. I love the the, the basic um, one color jacket. This is like a chambray gray denim and to pop in a lining that's something that it's just going to give it that little bit of flair. I just I love the effect of that. And the pockets too, the internal pockets, they've got um, welted pockets, which is, that was challenging to make. That is probably more of an advanced sewist ability. But you know what? When I started this jacket, I was not an advanced sewer. I was probably more of an intermediate and I got my way through it. They're not perfect, but you've got to start somewhere. And I think this is a great, um, a great pattern to start on to increase your abilities there. This I used um, a felt, like a lining, uh, probably one of the thinnest um, battings because I didn't want it to be too bulky and thick because you've got your double layer of fabric. You don't want it too bulky with the fabric because then when you add your light, your, um, your batting in the middle, it's going to be really bulky. Um, if, if you're living in a really cold climate, well, that's fine. You can go for it. You can add, add the thickest warmth there. Um, but remember, it will restrict you with your movement the more thick it is. So go for the lighter one first 
Um, and I've actually done a bias binding. Um, I'll just give you a little look at the internal part of that. I've done a bias binding around all the seams. And that was quite easy to do, actually. Bias binding is great for fixing up those messy seams. Um, and I've used a coordinating color, the dusty pink for that one. But yeah, with the quilting effect, uh, what I did was ruled up all the lines on that. You can actually do the diamond effect or the square. I just went for the square because it looked a bit easier. Um, what I did is um, the fabric, I think it uses like uh, at 1.8 to 2 meters of fabric of each. So one of the lighting, one of the outside. So I was quite good with fabric um, usage, not too much there. Um, and I actually ruled up the lines in chalk and uh, measured them all perfectly. And then you just have to take your time sewing the pieces. So you sew the pieces before you assemble the jacket together. So you'll do the back piece as one, sew all your stitching lines through it, the front pieces separately, and the sleeves. And then when you assemble it all together, uh, it's all it's already all quilted. So it's actually not as difficult as what it looks. Another version of the tamarack I did was a, um, a cotton... Uh, it's just a cotton poplin. I actually wanted it without the uh, inner batting, inner lining, and I just decided to do the black lining on the inside and the print on the outside. So I didn't put any any kind of layering in between that because I didn't want it to be too thick. Um, this one's a really nice little jacket for over the top of just jeans or pants, um, and I just think it's it's a great little classic design. Um, and you just use your bias binding on the edges to finish it all off. So that one, you can just roll, roll your sleeves up. I think with the lining, it just gives it that nice little effect when you roll your sleeves up as well. So, um, yeah, I'm really happy with the Tamarack. It's definitely worth sewing up, and I'd love to make a longer length one for uh, for winter. I just think that quilting effect just, uh, just looks fantastic. So the Tamarack comes in size 0 to 18. I wouldn't be surprised if they ended up increasing their size range as well because they're just starting to get on board with that too. They've released the new Thea, or Thea I'm not sure how you pronounce it, Thea jacket, uh, and they've actually done it with an increased size range as well, which is fantastic. And that's another nice new release casual jacket. Um, I'll pop some pictures up of that as well. It's just a, you can use it a denim, um, like a nice casual, um, something you can throw on over jeans. So yeah, that's the Grain Line Studios has done a great job with their pattern designs there. My next top pick would be the Sew Over It uh, Sylvia jacket, which was previously their kimono robe. And I think for culturally um, sensitive uh, issues, they renamed a lot of their, um, a lot of people with patterns named kimono, they've changed the names of them just to, for that sensitive topic, people were wondering why. If you look into the history and the cultural sensitivity of a certain garment, uh, there's reasons why they've all decided to get on board with that. So that's now called the Sylvia robe. And I'll show you the ones I've made in that. Now, although it's not really a warm wear coat or jacket, it's a casual style um, throw over, which I just love in a rayon. I've made this in a nice autumnal print rayon. Um, this just gives that beautiful drapey effect. If you're wanting just a little bit of a cover up over a t-shirt or over a dress, it's the perfect style. And there's only four pieces, so it's a really um, easy make and it can whip it up you know, quite easily. Within an hour, you can have it done. Um, you can lengthen and shorten the sleeves um, because they are just an add-on sleeve. That's just a separate piece. Um, you can even have it without the sleeve if you wanted just to have it more of a vest sort of style. Um, that is in a round. It does say light to medium weight draped fabrics, but I've actually made it in a Mexican poncho um, type of fabric as well. I'll show you that one. This is another sew over at Sylvia robe I've made as well. This is the Mexican poncho fabric, and I've done a little bit of um, addition with the. This is actually part of the fabric, the little the little bubble pieces, but I've kind of cut it out so I could I've used them on all the seam areas. And this is a really lovely little jacket. It's more of a structured effect um, robe style jacket. So it, it doesn't look the same without the drape. But I just I like it in the cropped version as well. So I've just cut it off a bit shorter than what the patterns stated there. But yeah, that's another way you can do the, the Sylvia. You can do it in a more a little bit more structured or a linen fabric just to give a different effect to that too. I've done it in a silky mustard, almost like the oriental print. I love this and I've actually worn this over either a black singlet dress or a pair of jeans and a little black top. This just adds a little hint of glamour to a plain black dress. So yeah, the silk works beautifully, silk or satin. You could make it in a georgette or in a chiffon or even like a see-through, like a, a lace would give a beautiful effect. I've seen uh, quite a few of those around 
in high street stores. And the size range in these, I think, is extra small to extra large. So, um, yeah, I think, it, as I said, this is probably a medium and it's, it's really roomy. So um, I don't think you need to worry about um, sizing up like a lot of the more structured style jackets. Got quite a lot of room. So, yeah, loving this one. Another mustard fabric for me. So I've talked about the patterns that I love that I've made. The next little list of things that I want to make that I've seen that I know are going to work for my wardrobe. Um, the first one would be, as I said, the, the Taya by Green Line Studios. And that looks like a really handy make. And the next one I've mentioned before on my last uh, vlog was the Aora from Pauline Alice. I am dying to make that in a linen and I think that would be great for those cold um, summer nights if you have that sort of chill in the air when it drops and you guys over in the northern hemisphere would probably find that great for this time of year for that autumnal period. Another one of my favorite pattern companies has a great looking kimono style jacket as well that's called the Tokyo and that is very similar to the sew over it um, Sylvia robe but it's more for woven fabrics like linens and cottons. Another kimono style jacket would be the Kochi by Paper Cut Patterns. That is another jacket I've looked at making in the past and I actually considered making the version that wraps around and has the little ties on it because I just think that looks stunning with a pair of jeans and heels if you're going out for night and you didn't want to wear that blousy style top. It's, it's like a jacket and blouse all in one. And the last jacket I'm considering making and I think you guys will all love is the Fulton jacket. The Fulton jacket is by Alina Sewing and Design Company. I've seen that before on Instagram uh, and I've, I know a lot of people have made that because it's a knit jacket that when it's on it doesn't look like a knit jacket it looks like quite a tailored style jacket but yeah it's made from it's made from either jersey fleece um, t French terry some people have made it in a boiled wool or a stretch velvet or a scuba or a ponty so there's so much that you can do with that jacket it looks fantastic. You can do two different lengths as well. And it has a beautiful little detail around the neckline. Having a knit jacket, I mean, what could be more comfortable than that? You're going to throw it on and it's going to give you that little bit of a tailored look, but it's going to feel like a sweater style top. So you could really use any type of medium weight knit for that one. Um, you might be wondering about my earrings. I'm actually an earring fanatic. This one is from Sokoki Creative. She's a lady from, from Melbourne, Australia, and she does beautiful little faces. Um, all different um, cultures. She does a lot of different uh, ethnicities uh, in her earrings, which I think is great. I'll give you a little close-up look at that. But yeah, they're really cute. And whenever I wear these out, I get a lot of comments. So yeah, have a look at her earrings. So that's Sokoki Creative. So that's all today. Thank you for watching my top uh, casual jacket roundup. I hope you've enjoyed that and I hope you've got a little bit of inspiration. Don't forget too to look on the fold line if you ever want to look up um, a style or you know you, you might want to make a jacket for example look up on the fold line search their patterns you can tick off whether you want indie pattern or the big four pattern um, you can tick off sleeve lengths that you want and that will give you a great roundup of, of anything that you might want to want to make. You can even put in what type of fabric you want to use and it'll it'll um It'll filter it down. So, yeah, that's a great way of finding a pattern if you're a bit stuck and, you know, if you've got fabric you want to make up and you're not, not sure what you want to do with it, um, the Fold Line website is a go-to for me. Thank you for tuning in again. Don't forget to subscribe. If you want to get your updates, click the bell, and I will see you next time for another chat about sewing. See you then. Bye for now.